So these are the notes for um, the lesson on proving identities. Um, and I will say these are, this is one of those lessons where your notes are more just giving you some examples. This is not really a section I can teach you what to do. I just show you some examples of things to try. And you know, some students kind of really struggle with this idea that when you're proving an identity, there's <laughs> countless ways of doing it. You're trying to just show a logical connection from one side of an expression to another. So let's get right to it. Um, a lot of these things we'll explore in, in some group problems, but in general, what I have here, and there's one extra blank point that I'll get to later on, uh, these are all things that tend to be helpful. But before I even read any of those, for this first identity, I want to prove that this is correct. You know, this is correct. 1 minus sine squared x is always the same as sine x times cos x times cotangent of x. OK, but prove it. Prove that it's correct. How do we prove that it's correct? Um, for any value of x, uh, aside from, you know, for example, there's cotangent, for example, has some restrictions. But aside from restrictions on a function, the left side and the right side should always be the same for any number. So how do we prove that? Well, in general, these things tend to be helpful. Simplify the right and left sides separately. So one thing I oh, we really want to do is we want to avoid like moving things from one side to the other. Um, so quite often, we just draw like a vertical line here to create a visual boundary to remind us we are treating our left and right hand sides separately. We don't want to start like adding sine squared x to both sides because then we no longer have this expression on the left hand side. We're trying to somehow take this expression and adjust it so that we lead to here. Or we end up more realistically, we end up kind of adjusting this side a bit, we adjust this side a bit until at some point we have the same things on both sides, we kind of meet in the middle. But we don't want to be multiplying both sides by something, we don't want to be dividing both sides by something. <coughs> so like I said, we kind of treat the left and right sides separately. Uh, quite often what's helpful is to write everything in terms of sine and cosine. You don't have to, but quite often that's helpful. Remember all six trigonometric functions can be written in terms of sine and cosine. Clearly, identities are going to come into play. <laughs> That's what this chapter is about. Um, use identities to rewrite parts. Quite often, finding common denominators when we have rational expressions are helpful. Put them together. Quite often, factoring is helpful, <coughs> especially when you have a rational expression. It helps you cancel some, some things out. And then there's this one last point, which I'll get to later on. OK. Oh, that's right, right? So let's look at this. How can I prove this is correct? Uh, well. One thing that I hope is now sounding more familiar is when we look at 1 minus sine squared x, that's the same as cosine squared x. And that goes back to our Pythagorean identity. Note that sine squared x plus cos squared x always equals 1. And so therefore, if I subtract sine squared x from both sides, cos squared x is the same as 1 minus sine squared x. And so that said, I don't normally have to, I don't have to write this down. It's for the notes, so I want us to be clear where it comes from. But you know, once we know, we know we don't have to reprove previous identities. But if I know the Pythagorean identity is true, then I know that 1 minus sine squared x is the same as cos squared x. OK, how is that a helpful? Well, so far, not so much, but I kind of like that better. Let's look at the right-hand side. Uh, let's rewrite cotangent in terms of sine and cos. And so if I do that, I can rewrite this as sine x times cosine x times cotangent is the same as cosine over sine. How is that helpful? Well, hopefully now it's becoming apparent that I have, especially if I write this as a fraction over 1, I have a factor of sine in the numerator and the denominator that cancels out. So all I have left here is, actually I don't need that equal sign is cosine squared x. And hey, what do you know? I got the same thing on the left side and the right side. And quite often we say left side equals right side. And we're done. I've proven that 1 minus sine squared x is the same as sine x times cos x times cotangent x. And I kind of proved it by essentially kind of adjusting the two sides separately until we got to a point we could meet in the middle. All right, and that's very commonly how we do this. Notice I didn't multiply both sides by anything. I didn't divide or move one term to the other side. I kept my two sides separate. OK, so let's look at this. Let's prove this identity. And yeah, I'm not lying to you. It's always true. 
Uh, tan x times sine x plus cos x is always the same as secant x. <laughs> okay, but how? Okay, how do we show this is true? Uh, again, I'm going to draw that vertical line to just give myself a little visual reminder to keep my two sides separate. First thing I'm going to do is rewrite secant in terms of sine and cos, or really just cosine, one over cosine x. Now, while I'm at it, I'm going to do the same thing for tangent. Rewrite tangent in terms of sine and cos. And leave everything else alone. OK, what good does this do me? Well, there's not much I can do on the right-hand side anymore. It's just 1 over cosine x. So I'm going to focus on the left-hand side. What can I do here next? Well, all of this right here, I can write as a single fraction, um, especially if I think of it as sine x over 1. So I have sine x times sine x in the numerator, which is sine squared x over cos x plus cos x. OK, what can I do next? Well, I can see that somehow I've got to take this and put it into a single fraction. Uh, if this is going to be correct. So let's put these fractions together. Let's find a common denominator here. And to find a common denominator, it's pretty easy to do. Uh, I need to multiply this by cos of x and this times cosine of x. And so in my numerator, what do I have now? I have sine squared x plus cos x times cos x is cos squared x all over the cosine of x. All right, notice. I am getting mighty close to accomplishing my goal. I have 1 over cos x on the right-hand side. I have sine squared x plus cos squared x over cos x on the left-hand side. And hopefully, at this point, you know what to do. So hopefully, you recognize that as the most important identity. That is the Pythagorean identity. Everything you see there is just 1, and I'm done. And I can see now I have the left-hand side equal on the right-hand side. So I'll just say left side equals right side. So for all these, how you show your work is everything. Um, there's not really an answer. I'm, I'm giving you an identity that's true. You have to logically show it that it's true in a clear and concise manner. Um, and that's kind of different. You're not finding an answer. You're not solving something. You're proving something. So it is a bit different. Uh, and how you, ex how you communicate is crucial. Right? You're communicating algebraically. And, and, every, and how clear everything is is crucial, because I have to be able to see the steps. Like Again, we know this is true. Your job is to show me that you can prove that it's true. All right, let's look at this one. So as before, I'm going to create this sort of visual boundary for myself. Uh, what should I do here? Well, <coughs> let's look at the left-hand side. <coughs> Cotangent, and rewrite that as cos over sine. And cosecant, while I'm at it. Let's rewrite that as 1 over sine. OK. Uh, I could, let's, let's focus on the left-hand side. I now have a common denominator. So why don't I put these together? They have a common denominator of sine x. And so I have cos x minus 1 on the left-hand side in the numerator over sine x. Not much more I can really do at this point. Um, and so I'm going to just at least put the left side on hold <coughs> and look at the right-hand side. And there's a fair amount I can do here. Um, I have the double angle identity for cosine and the double angle identity for sine. Now, the double angle identity for sine is a little bit easier to start with because there's only one form of it I've asked us to kind of memorize. And that is that the same as 2 times a sine x times cos x. For the double angle identity for cosine, there's three different forms. So quite often, we're not sure which one to use. There is no wrong answer, but sometimes if we think ahead, we can by um, you know, picking one that saves, up a, saves us a few steps. That said, um, if we're not sure which one to use, I'm going to kind of tell you my sort of rationale here. Um, if I write down this one, if I write down cos squared x minus sine squared x, I have two different types of functions in my numerator. I have a cosine and sine functions. 
if I write down uh, this one, 1 minus 2 sine squared x, again, I have two different types of functions in my numerator, which is not wrong, but I'd rather have the same one over and over. So that's why I'm choosing this one, 2 cos squared x take away 1. Because in my numerator, I only have one type of function, which is the cosine function. And so let me write, I'm going to rewrite my numerator, because I, 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 as you can see, I have a form of a quadratic expression in my numerator. So I'm going to rewrite it as 2 cos squared x minus cosine of x minus 1. Sorry, I've been talking too long today. Stop talking so much. And so in my denominator, um, I could just copy it out. But as well, one of the bullet points at the beginning of the lesson, I mentioned that factoring tends to be useful. Well, in my denominator, I can take out a factor of sine. And so let's try that, take out a factor of sine. OK. so. Now maybe I can get an insight into what I want to try here. Because if I look at what I have here and I compare my two sides, here I have just a sine x. Here I have sine x times 2 cos x plus 1. So unless I made a mistake, there must be a way to cancel this 2 cos x plus 1 out of the numerator and the denominator. But to do that, I have to then I have to factor my numerator. And so let's now factor my numerator. And kind of see where I want to go here. Let's try factoring my numerator. Well, the good thing is we factored stuff like this before. It's a quadratic ex uh, expression with a trigonometric function inside of it. And if you factor it properly, it should take a couple of steps. We should get cos x minus 1 as one of your factors and 2 cos x. It's a weird looking cos x. 2 cos x plus 1 as your other factor. And again, Go from here to here. I skipped, uh, skipped a couple steps because I mean we've done this sort of stuff lots. Like I keep saying, it's not hard. It takes a bit of practice. But now I can finish this off. The hardest part of the question is done. Because now I can see I do indeed have a factor of two cos x plus one that I can reduce from both, and then I'm done. You can see I have the exact same thing on the left and right hand sides. And so notice this problem required us to work with fractions and factoring. And identities. A lot of things we use here. Definitely the hardest one yet. And probably I think this is actually the hardest of all four I have <coughs> in our notes. But that leads me to the last one I want to look at. Now for this one, if you look at all the things we've done before, <coughs> there's not much I can really do. Everything already is in terms of sine and cosine. There's nothing to factor. None of the identities Oh, come back to this quite nicely. So we're kind of stuck. And this leads me to the last sort of point uh, that I wanted to include at the top of the lesson. Where are we? Right here. Be helpful is to <coughs> multiply the numerator and the denominator of an expression by its conjugate. So let me write that down and remind you what that means. conjugate. What does it mean again? It goes back to pre-calculus 11. Hopefully you've learned about it. That's it. It's not a particularly hard thing. Uh, let me just kind of show it here. The conjugate of something requires looking at a binomial, two terms. So I can find the conjugate of 1 minus cos x, or I can find the co conjugate of 1 plus cos x. i got to pick one. The conjugate of 1 minus cos x is 1 plus cos x. The conjugate of 1 plus cos x is 1 minus cos x. <coughs> That's all it is. It's just the same two terms, but with the sign in the middle being different. Um, so I'll pick one. I'll stick with the first one. 
I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator of the left-hand side by the conjugate of 1 minus cosine x. And the conjugate of 1 minus cosine x is 1 plus cosine x. And so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply the numerator and the denominator here by 1 plus cosine x. How is that of any use to us? Well, what I essentially have in the numerator is a difference of squares. 1 plus cos x times 1 minus cos x <coughs> is 1 minus cos squared x. Uh, essentially a difference of squares, which relates back to one of our key identities. In my denominator, I could distribute the sine out, or I could just be lazy and leave it as sine x times 1 plus cos x. It's not wrong to distribute it, but is it really going to make our life any easier? It actually won't, as we'll see in a moment. Um, and so just leave it like this. Essentially, if I leave it, if I write it like this, you know, sine x times 1 plus cos x, I essentially just leave my denominator factored. And factors are always quite useful, or often quite useful. And so now at this point, all that's left is to realize, hey, 1 minus cos squared x, I can rewrite that as sine squared x going using our Pythagorean identity. And then in my numerator, I have sine times sine. In my denominator, I have just a single factor of sine, so I can cancel one of these out from each. And so what I have left is just sine x in the numerator and 1 plus cosine x in the denominator, which is exactly what I have on the left-hand side. Sorry, the right-hand side. So in this case, I didn't actually do anything to the right-hand side. And my two sides are the same. And so if I look back at the beginning of the lesson, <coughs> These, what I have here, are not steps one, two, three, four, five. They're just things that tend to be helpful. And you've seen at least one example of all of these in these problems. <coughs> Simplify the left and right sides separately. Rewrite everything in terms of sine and cosine. Use identities, use common denominators, use factoring, and sometimes even use the conjugate of something. Last thing I want to say, and I'm not going to work it out, this final problem is pretty mean. Uh, if we have time, we'll do it in class, but honestly, I think we've got enough here, so I'm going to stop, okay? Um.